Hello and welcome everyone to this video on using SAP Workflow Containers by Zarin Tech. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our Zarin Tech YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update from us. Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss using Workflow Containers. So before directly jumping to Workflow Containers, we need to understand one thing. What is the meaning of containers here? So in normal AWAP, when we create variables to store the various kinds of data, we mainly create variables to store various kinds of data. In case of workflow, we create yeah, or use the containers for storing the data. This is the important concept here that in case of workflow, we mainly use the concept of containers for storing the data. And what is a container? So a container is nothing but a data structure that is used to store data that is required by the workflow. So in case of container, it is what is a container? It is nothing but a data structure that is used to store data that is required by the workflow. Then we have the various kinds of container. The first one is a workflow container, which we will discuss in detail here. So the first, what is the meaning of it? This workflow container can be created at workflow level. So in case of workflow, we create this container and this workflow container can have import parameter and export parameter as well. Then the, this, the workflow container is the main container in SAP web workflow. It stores data that is required by the workflow as a whole, such as the current state of the workflow, the participants in the workflow and the objects that are being processed by the workflow. Then we have the task container inside if suppose you require any container in case of any task you want to contain any data then in that case what we do we go for the task container so the task container stored data that is required by a specific task in the window and the data can include the input parameters of the task the output parameters from the task and the status of the task as well then we have the rule container. So for every step in a workflow, an object will be created. We have already discussed that in case of workflow, uh, whenever every step will be done, an object will be created and that object will be called as workflow items. And these work items are assigned to various agents. There are different ways to assign the work items to agent and the various ways to assign them are called rule. And in the rule container, we are going to discuss this. The rule container contains data that is used by the workflow rules. This data can include the rules that are defined for the workflow, the conditions that are associated with the rules, and the actions that are taken when the rules are triggered. Then we have the method container. So if you want to store any data at the method level, in that case, we go for method container. And it can be used to pass data to the method to receive data from the method and to store temporary data that is used by the method. This method container is also used to pass data between different methods that are called from a workflow. Then we have the event container. So in case of event container, we have BO event and class event. So this event container stores data that is related to events that occur in the window. This data can include the type of event, the time step of the event, and the participants in the event. Then some of the important points related to container. See, a workflow container can import and export data to the event container as well as the task container. So in this case of workflow container, it is importing and exporting data from the event, but and also exporting to the rule container. And see, in case of workflow, what is going on here? It is able to import and export from the event and task as well. Then we have the workflow container can only export the data to the rule container. It can only export the data to the rule container. Then we have a task container can also import as well as export data to the method container. So the task container is importing and exporting from the workflow and method as well. Also, the task container can only export the data to the rule container. It only exports the data to the root container, and an event controller can export data to the can only export the data to the task container. So let's take a requirement. And what is my requirement? I'm going to discuss here. Let's simply go to SWDD. Suppose I want to create a workflow for leave request approval from my reporting manager. And 
then the next one is we have start date start date start date and the in the web data type we are going to select as datum in the properties again mark import export click on ok then the next one is end date so in case of end date let's select end date end date in the web data type we will pass datum in the properties let's mark import export no need to pass the in now see how we are going to use this container. So simply go to this user decision and here in the parameter, you can use them. Click on this search button. So first I'm passing name, then the second one will be type. Then the third one is will be start date. And here the fourth one, end date. So whatever the input you will give while executing it, your reporting manager or agent will receive this so that he can decide which user has requested for the leave approval. So simply click on this OK button and click on this activate button. Workflow definition saved and activated successfully. Now simply click on this execute one. So here you can pass any input if you want. In the type so I am giving as urgent leave. Then the start date, suppose I select it from 21.7. And then and the end date should be 24. Simply save it. And click on the execute one. Let's see what is happening here. In case of workflow, you can see we have got two workflow assigned. See, you've got two one. Uh, the current one will be this one. This was my yesterday, which I was creating. Simply go on it, and so it will select. And here you can see we are getting leave request approval. So simply click on this approve button. This is my you will be my user. All right, go to back, click on SWDD, execute, execute this one, leave. See, in case of workflow log, we can see our current state of our workflow here. That is what is the current state of our workflow. So whatever data we passed in the container, my agent is going to see that which user has requested for the leave and from which date he want to take the leave. So this kind of thing, we can use the concept of workflow container. And what are these workflow containers? They are one of the important thing that you need to understand. So this workflow container can be created at workflow level. And this workflow container can have import parameter and export parameter as well. The workflow container is the main container in SAP web workflow. It has stored data that is required by the workflow as a whole, such as the current state of the workflow, the participants in the workflow, and the objects that are being processed by the workflow. All right. And what is a container? A container is a data structure that is used to store data that is required by the workflow. Okay. So this is all about our using workflow containers. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.